Okay, so I'm going to talk about troubleshooting a hot water boiler. <clears throat> um, so, I'll just go over the parts. The yellow hose here is for the natural gas that comes in. This is a natural gas fire boiler. Um, this is the off switch for the gas. So you can turn that 90 degrees and it shuts off the gas. The power switch for the boiler is right here. To make it out. This is the boiler. This is the indirect fed hot water tank. These are the, the loops, the pumps, I should say, for each heating or hot water, um, I guess, loop. So the pipe. So it basically completes the loop all the way up through the house for the hot water. Uh, I mean the heating and then it returns and feeds back into the boiler where the water gets reheated. Same with the domestic hot water. It feeds into this indirect fired hot water tank, cycles through, there's a coil inside, and then it comes back through and gets reheated. So that's why they call it indirect. It's heated indirectly by the hot water that this boiler produces. This is the pressure gauge. Normally it should be between 12 and 15 PSI. Anything below that um, is not good. It can cause cavitation in these impellers, which can wear down the impellers. And also, uh, if there's no pressure, the boiler won't run. And also, um, it decreases your boiling point of the, uh, the water in the system. This guy here is the pressure tank. Um, what that does is when water heats up, it expands. There's a diaphragm in this and it takes up, it basically it, it takes up the slack of the hot water. So when hot water heats up, it expands, it'll go into this tank, the diaphragm stretches, it maintains the pressure in the system. When the pressure cools down, the diaphragm, well the hot water um, loses, um, I guess it, it shrinks and then it comes back up, meanwhile keeping pressure in the system. So very important. If this malfunctions, This pressure release valve over here will go off. So you'll see a puddle of water down at the bottom here. These are the zone valves. So this is for the heating loop. There's four zones and they're labeled the main, the second floor, the den, and the bathroom. What happens is when you call for heat from the thermostat in any one of the zones, this switch will move over and there, basically what's inside is there's a motor so this is a electrical mechanical valve this motor will turn on and will open this valve and when this valve opens it lets hot water go through the system also at the end there's something called an end switch this valve will open and there's a little micro switch here and an arm hits the switch telling the boiler to turn on and I'll demonstrate that with this wire up at this manifold. It jumps, I should say terminal, it jumps. I can jump the two, the end switch. So if I were to do this, you hear the boiler come on. There you hear it fire up. And then the temperature will start going up. I'm going to remove it. it, shuts off, and basically all I'm doing with this wire is I'm simulating a thermostat. Okay, so, common issues. If one of these valves, if we don't get heat upstairs, what can happen is this valve, the end switch could be bad, or the motor itself isn't working. Another common problem is if we throw a fault code on this panel here, it'll throw some type of code. You can reset that by hitting either reset or shutting it off. You might have to do both. Now, sometimes there's also, I've had happen, an error code with low pressure. The boiler's smart enough to know that if there's low pressure, um, not to operate. Up here, is a water feed valve. Um, 
what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be an automatic water feed, but I think this one is stuck so that it's not feeding automatically at a certain amount of pressure. It's supposed to be set at a certain pressure, but regardless, um, if this va if this if this gauge here reads below this blue one up here, if it reads and it's touching this little bar here. So right now we're at like I think 12 psi. If it's touching this bar, it means there's no pressure, and that might throw a fault code over here. I'm not sure why it happens. It has happened a couple times since I've changed this pressure tank. I did we did have an older one; it didn't work right. But since we've changed it to that one, it seems to work fine now. But should that pressure drop for whatever reason, you can feed it using this up here. There's a little switch right here. I don't think I have enough light, but push up on it. You can hear it. It feeds water into the system and builds the pressure back up. If you do that, come over here and look at the gauge to see what the pressure is at. Just raise it until it's above 10 psi and the boiler should fire back up. If it doesn't, hit the reset button or power it off or do both. Um, so other than that, that's about the about everything we have to do with uh, troubleshooting the simple things. This is the power, the main power for it. So if you shut this off, it shuts off the power to the whole system. Um, this is a transformer used for, it's a low voltage tran AC transformer used for these zone valves. And also connects up to the, uh, it can be used to connect up to the thermostat, but in our case, uh, it's used just for these zone valves. So that's what causes those motors to turn when we call for heat up in the thermostat. Um, and the last thing, actually one other thing, is down here, we can't see it very well because of the light, but down here is a condensation pump. So if this container overfills, um, the, there might be something wrong with the pump. And you just need to bail that out every once in a while. It usually only happens during the winter when the pump, when the boiler's on a lot and it causes a lot of condensation. Um, okay, that should just about cover it. There's no reason to ever really enter inside here because there's nothing in there that um, you can service for um, for troubleshooting. At least not uh, not with basic not with just the basic knowledge. Better to call someone. And then again, another pressure release valve right here, which feeds down. So if this gets too hot, this valve will go off.